Hi, my little butterflies, and welcome back to our series, The Broken Mirror. As always, if you haven't watched the chapters before this one, go watch them right now. The story was written by Lazy January and yours truly, me. The art was done by Lazy, and I will be playing the narrator and Chat Noir. Hi guys, I'm Lazy, and today I'll be voicing Marinette slash Ladybug, Tiki, Alia, and the villain for today's chapter, Princess Parasite. Hope you all are having a great day. I'm January, and I'll be voicing Nino and Miss Bustier. Of course, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. It really helps us out. Now on with the chapter. Chapter 4, Princess Parasite. Go to page 120 and read passages 14 through 17. After that, answer the questions on a spare sheet of paper. Miss Busty instructed, piling together some loose papers spread across her desk. The sound of paper rustling engulfed the classroom, each student searching for the right page. Within seconds, the sound died down, and once again, the classroom is quiet, with the occasional tap of a pencil or a squeak from someone shifting in their seat. In their final semester of junior year, the students of College Francois Dupont were studying hard for their finals, which would take place in the following week and a half. Recent events have caused Marinette to lose her touch, and she hasn't been very focused on one singular thing. She struggled reading the first few passages and answered them to an extent. She knew she probably got at least half wrong, and all you noticed. Everyone seemed to finish the assignment within the next 15 minutes and handed them in as, they, as soon as they finished. Marinette got up last, almost tripping on a backpack down the few steps. When she reached Miss Bustier's desk, she placed the paper with the others and turned to leave, glancing at Adrian. To her surprise, she didn't feel anything, not like she had before. She reached her seat when Miss Bustier started. All right, since everyone is done with this, you can either sit quietly and read a book or talk to your neighbor. Immediately, the room erupted with chatter from all sides, talking about the questions they had to answer and how they might have missed one or two. So, Marinette, how are things going with your friend? Alia asked, her head propped against her hand. Which one? Does the black cat ring a bell? Alia smirked. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. Marinette shrugged. I think it's safe to say a certain bug hasn't taken her mind off him, has she? Marinette's face glowed with embarrassment. Alia chuckled. So I am right. No, of course you're not right. But she hasn't talked to him about a certain incident either. Marinette laid her head in her arms, avoiding any more questions. What are we talking about, ladies? You know, asked, turning around to face the both of them. Marinette's having some boy trouble. Alia answered. Boy trouble? Adrian asked, also turning around. Yeah, she kissed a guy she says is just a friend. Ollie explained. Damn, Marinette. Nino laughed. Why'd you kiss him then? Adrian questioned, tilting his head to the side ever so slightly. That's what we don't know. Ollie replied, turning her head to look at Marinette, who still hasn't moved. The sound of hands clapping turned everyone's attention to Miss Bustier. The bell is about to ring. In a minute or so, be sure to take all your belongings and have a great rest of your day. She finished as the bell rang and everyone got up, racing to get to lunch. Marinette got up with Ollie and headed up the stairs to the cafeteria without another word. The cafeteria was already filled with students and the four of them stepped into line, each grabbing a tray. They all grabbed a slice of pizza and a drink before heading to an open table. Marinette set down her tray and glanced over at the many windows letting light in. She swore she saw a black cat walking on top of a roof, but when she looked back, there was nothing. I'll be right back. Marinette faltered, stepping away from the table. Ollie looked over to where Marinette was looking at. You okay, Marinette? She asked, hanging her book back on the chair. Yeah, I just need to uh, use the bathroom. She said, turning around to leave. Uh, I'll go check on her, Adrian offered, step getting up to follow Marinette. Okay, then. Ollie said, smiling. She picked up the slice of pizza. Guess it's just you and me, you know? Marinette was already at the locker rooms when, and entered the restroom. She went up to the sink and placed her hands on both sides, staring at herself in the mirror. Kiss meant nothing. You don't have feelings for him, and you never will. He's nothing but a partner, a friend. Your ladybug, get your act together. She whispered sternly to herself. She turned the tap on and cupped her hands together under the running water, creating a makeshift cup. Marinette splashed the water onto her face, hoping to rid any thoughts of Chat Noir. Marinette turned on, off the water and walked over to get a paper towel. She heard a knock on the restroom door. Marinette, are you in there? Adrian asked, slightly muffled. Adrian? She whispered. She quickly wiped her hands on the paper towel and tossed it in the trash can, opening the door slightly. You need something? She hadn't realized that talking to Adrian had become a million times easier. Are you okay? He hesitated. She opened the door a little bit more. 
Depends. What are you here for? I was just making sure you're okay. You seemed a little upset earlier. His voice soft with affection. Well, I'm fine, thanks. She said coldly and closed the door without a second thought, turning her back to the door and sliding down it, crossing her arms around her legs. Marinette didn't mean to sound as rude as she did, but she couldn't stand everyone asking if she liked the guy she kissed. She only hated it because she didn't know what to say. She says she doesn't like him, but when she sees him, it just feels different. The only way she could avoid her feelings is to avoid the question. You know, Marinette, when Kagami and I were dating, we actually never kissed. Adrian began, sitting on the floor, back to the door. I thought you guys were madly in love or something like that. She said with a sense of guilt. It's, um... Uh, it's complicated, he replied, rubbing the back of his neck. I can relate. What do you mean? He inclined in a courteous manner. You know you're not the only one with problems. I did have a boyfriend. She continued. Did? Yep, we broke up not so long ago. I thought you two were like a power couple or something. Yeah, it's... Uh, she hesitated. Complicated, he finished for her. Yeah, something like that. He chuckled. I guess we're in the same boat then. She smiled softly to herself. Yeah, I guess we are. She didn't know if this was nice or just out of the blue. She knew for sure she didn't like him anymore, but I guess that you never fully stop loving someone, do you? She would always think of him higher than the others. She would always like him for who he was. Even if for some he didn't do somersaults every time her hand touched his, or even just looking at him. He would always have a special place in her heart, even if their relationship was totally platonic, but maybe someone else might steal it. Did you even like her, Kagami? Marinette said it with quiet empathy. I mean, I did, but I liked someone else at the same time, and I still do. Oh. She trailed off. How could he do that to Kagami? Marinette remembered how hurt Kagami was when they broke up. She felt a stab of guilt as she thought about how Marinette thought she had a chance with him now that they were broken up. Do you mind me asking who? She said, not wanting to sound pushy. Oh, um, it's a... He is cut off by the intercom speaker. Please evacuate the school in an orderly fashion. An akumatized villain has been unleashed upon our school. Please make your way to the nearest exit and find safety. They heard the door open and another voice became apparent. Sorry, did I interrupt something? I would leave, but I need to grow my army somehow. The voice giggled before they heard a zap. Fine, Ladybug and Shanamar, and bring them to me. Now it's for you all. Don't run. Don't hide. Ladybug and Shanamar won't run this time. I will. <laughs> Everyone went quiet. Marinette knew what she had to do. She jumped up and opened the door. Adrian had already left. She opened the door to the courtyard and was immediately knocked backwards. The person who had done so was on top of Marinette. She opened her eyes to green ones staring into hers. She realized it was Chat Noir and blushed wildly. To find a place to hide, he said softly. T to, to hide? She asked hotly. He got up and helped her up, noticing how Marinette didn't hesitate to grab his hand. If you exit through this window, you should be able to make it back to your house safely, he explained opening the large windows. Uh, okay. She squeaked, walking up to the open window. Wait, how do you know where I live? Uh, he stammered, quit rubbing the back of his neck. Um, I visited your house a couple of times, haven't I? Oh, yeah. She climbed up out of the window and landed on the sidewalk, looking back to make sure Chat Noir wasn't looking. There was no one on the streets and she opened her purse. Looks like we need Ladybug. Kiki exclaimed, flying up to meet Marinette's gaze. Looks like it. Marinette agreed. She transformed and within seconds she was Ladybug. She zipped around the building up into the courtyard, landing just a foot away from Chat Noir where he was fighting the villain. Nice of you to drop in, m'lady, Chat Noir remarked as Ladybug brought out her yo-yo, spinning it in front of her. Save the sweet talk for later, kitty cat. Ladybug said smoothly. Oh, does my lady have something important to attend to? He said in a flirtatious way. Wouldn't you like to know? She said, dodging the hand of Princess Parasite. Stay still, you obnoxious bug. Princess Parasite hissed. You're gonna have to do better than that to take our miraculouses. Ladybug jeered, grabbing her arm and pulling it away from herself. You say that now, but when I have your miraculous, I'll be the one laughing. Come on, Hawkmoth has been trying to do this for a year or two. Do you really think this will actually work?
Shot Noir said mockingly, dodging each and every thrust of her hand towards him, noticing the green bracelet on her left wrist, the only thing that stood out. Yukuma's in her bracelet, Shot Noir said, barely loud enough for her to hear. Hmm, it looks like we'll need to find a way to drop her hand so she can't touch us. She's basically a germ, so we need a dark place since germs can't spread as fast in the dark. Ladybug exclaimed. I think I know just the place. Chat Noir grinned, whispering into Ladybug's ear. She could feel her face getting warmer as he was so close to her. They made their road to the building that would help them complete their plan, the movie theater. Chat Noir opened the door with a squeak. It was pitch black and only Chat Noir could see. Grab my hand, he said, extending his arm out for her to hold on to. She grabbed it without a second thought, holding on tightly as if it would be her last. She couldn't see a thing as she walked blindly, oblivious to where they were and how far they'd be already traveled. Shanoar opened the door to one of the theaters and found the light switch. Blind Ladybug for a second before her eyes adjusted and she once again could see. And now we wait. Ladybug said, walking over to a seat and plopping herself in one of them. She sighed and got comfortable. Chat Noir walked over to join her, and he didn't know how long it would take for Princess Parasite to show up. So, he started. So? Ladybug's head turned towards his. How's life? He finished, turning his head to meet hers. Not perfect. Yet. She thought. Very unlikely for someone as perfect as you, he said flirtatiously. She put her hand on her forehead and giggled. Oh my god. Hey, you're the one who told me to save it for later, he remarked, chuckling a little bit. Shut up already. She said playfully, resting her head on his shoulder. Aw, I love lovebirds having fun. Both Ladybug and Chat Noir's heads whipped around to see Princess Parasite with her arms holding up her head on the top of the seats they were just sitting at. Ladybug backed up and yelled for her lucky charm, a baking pan dropping down. And how's that supposed to help you? Are you going to bake me into a pie? Princess Parasite jumped down, knocking Ladybug to the floor. Princess Parasite reached down to touch her. Shinoir, now! Ladybug screamed, using the lucky charm as a shield. The lights went out as Princess Parasite's hand was stopped. Looks like you were right, my lady. Germs can't move in the dark. He walked up to Princess Parasite, who was frozen, removing Ladybug from underneath and helping her up before returning to the villain. Cataclysm, he whispered, barely coming in contact with the bracelet before feeling it turn to dust. Ladybug turned on the lights once more, catching the dark butterfly circling the room. Bye-bye, little butterfly. She said, watching it flutter out before grabbing the lucky charm and throwing it into the air. Miraculous ladybug! The magical ladybugs flew around the room. Before exiting the theater altogether, her attention turned to a small girl, maybe eight years old, on the floor. Ladybug? Chenoir? Where am I? She quavered. Chenoir, you want to do the honors? He nodded and picked up the small girl. How about we go back to your house? He turned around once more. See you soon, bugaboo. He smiled, a smile spreads across her face. She watched them leave the theater inside. He was just simply amazing. Ladybug brought out her yo-yo and zipped around the city to the familiar bakery she grew up in, drew trans- detransforming as she landed on her roof. Marinette stretched out onto her bed inside. What's got you in a good mood? Tiki asked. Oh, nothing. But the airflow! My lungs are suffocating! She's dead. Go to page 120 and read passages 14 and 7. That was a British accent. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I brought up the British accent I needed a chapter ago. Oh, (laughs) dear God. Marinette got a blast, almost ripping out. Immediately, <laughs> the glazy got more in the mask. <laughs> oh, you sick child! I can't believe I touched your phone. Where is this hand sanitizer? <clears throat> what are we talking about, ladies? Uh, are we gonna? <laughs> you know, left. <laughs> <coughs> Lacey's dying, guys. Do you mind me asking? <coughs> right here, thanks! Lacey's dying. <coughs> Girl, Lacey, you're dying. 
she asked, hanging her book on book. Marinette was already at her locker. Marinette was. <laughs> He said coldly and closed the door with a second with Whew. The kiss and nothing. You don't have feelings for him and you will and oh my god. <sighs> she turned the tap and she turned the tap on and cupped her hands together under the running. Oh my gosh. We would always think of him she would always think of him. Oh Marinette. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. They're gonna redo that. Cause I can't read, apparently. <laughs> Both Ladybug and Chat Noir's heads whipped around to see Princess Paranite. Whip. <risos> Bom, uh... Marinette, essa música é para você. Eu não preciso de declarações. O Adrian canta para você, Marinette. Ele tá cantando para você. Minhas mais sensíveis palavras. Não preciso de um sol se pondo, nem nadar no mar com golfinho. Golfinho? Eu não quero nada assim. Eu não quero nada assim. Pois com seu silêncio, ouço um coração batendo, como asas de uma borboleta voar. Ah. A melodia que eu amo. A melodia que me faz sorrir Meu coração bate junto ao seu A melodia que diz que eu Eu te amo